All right, uh, this is going to be a little showing of, uh, this is a regular coil, 100 turns. This is a bifiler coil, um, the meter. And I, what I did was I stuck a diode here, and I put a little heat sink on it. It's in series between the reed switch and the coils to try to keep the uh, reverse EMF off of my reed switches. I've been tearing up a lot of reed switches, and uh, these aren't available anymore. Um, I bought 25 of them, and I'm down to about 15 of them now, uh, putting them through stress tests, trying things. Uh, so I want to try to conserve them. So here we have uh, the reverse CMF taken off of the coil into one diode, um, stored in these little capacitors, and then I have a little 1,000 ohm load resistor. Uh, if you don't have the load resistor, the reed will, uh, you know, take on some voltage, even with this diode here. So the voltage, I believe this diode, I looked it up, uh, is 400 peak inverse voltage, but it still seems to be uh, putting some spark across the uh, the reed switch. Uh, it's not as bad with the diode there, so it helps. Um, so what I'm going to be able to do is uh, pull out this resistor to show the reverse EMF, the high voltage. Uh, there's a little bit of voltage across here, you know, uh, it's showing around 4 or 5 volts um, across the 1000 ohm resistor as a load. Um, we're going to fire this up. Let's get this going. Um, these coils aren't real strong. It's just air core. Um, running uh, four batteries on it. Let's see the read. There's no uh, blue pulsing there. Get it up to speed here. You see the voltage climbing. Oops. Knocked the read out of place. Let's see. seem to be running a little faster before. Sometimes I can speed it up and get it past those resonance spots. There we go. Now if I take out this resistor, this is about the fastest it runs. You can hear it. I don't know why the voltage is changing, but we're going to take out this resistor. Watch this. That's the captured reverse EMF voltage. You might be able to see a little, yeah, you can see it. A little bit of pulsing on the reed, but this diode is helping to alleviate some of that so it's not uh, latching. 210 volts around there, so we'll put this back in. And we're back down to our 3.7 volts. Um, it's about all the faster it goes, so now what we're going to do is. Uh, I'll take this one out. Um, let me try to get this off of here. With this sticky tape I got it on there with. Okay. This is the bifiler. I have one big long loop up here where they're connected together. So we'll stick it down on where the other one was. Timing might have to be adjusted a little bit because I moved it. And hook this back up. That one there. Okay. Get back up to speed.
runs about the same speed. Um, let's see. This wire came out. Uh, 2.5 volts. Now, if we adjust our timing a little bit, we get it back up to where it was before. Maybe it's not close enough. Coils are kind of weak, as in producing a magnetic field. Okay, we're back around where we were before. Uh, I'll take the resistor out. A little bit of a difference. I mean, it's probably because I have it adjusted a little bit more, but uh, throughout the tests I've tried, there's really nothing special. Nothing special for what we're doing here. Put the resistor back in. I don't know why the voltage is varying. It seems like when I take the load off of here, uh, it tends to run a little faster. Um, or a little slower, actually. When I put the load on, it actually starts to run a little faster. Let's see, get back up to speed. Keep knocking this wire off of here. Trying to spin this thing up. But, yeah, it's just uh, not really getting much out of these now. While it's running, I've got this uh, little pancake coil I made. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it's very little, if any, gaps on it uh, to see through. Uh, came out pretty good. I just have long leads here and then I have it shorter at the ends. It does give a little bit of length effect when you put it near the rotor. You'll be able to hear it slow down. I'm going to bring the camera close so you can hear it slow down. But I would imagine any piece of copper or chunk of coil that you put near, short it out, slow it down, but I really don't get much of a, you know, voltage charge off of it, it's, it's not uh, of any great use to me here, so that's about as fast, as slow as she's going to go there with that, so you get a little bit of lens effect off of it, not much, take it away. She should speed back up. Slowly. Because these coils don't really have uh, not much juice. Uh, they get warm. Uh, with this diode in the way, it's taking away a little bit of the voltage uh, from the batteries. Uh, you know, a little voltage drop. Um, Earlier, when I was setting this up for the video, uh, the reed switch was locking up and the coil got really hot, um, and so did my diode, so I just put this little heat sink on. Uh, the diode is still good, I just didn't want to hurt it, but uh, not much difference in these bifilers. Um, I've tried it... Uh, where you have these two ends connected to the board and then connecting these two ends together uh, so loop through and then loop back and it doesn't make the wheel spin at all there's zero magnetic force there um, and that would be the same for charging also it doesn't really receive any charge that way so uh, what, it, what it, probably good for is maybe in resonant circuits which I'm probably not hitting the frequencies that this thing is requiring um, but for me I don't see much uh, use for it all right thanks